What is it? Well, it's a chiroptorium, Greg. Chiroptorium is a word we made up, my son and my wife, Margaret. Actually, chiroptera is the uh, order in science that bats fall into. It means hand wing. And of course, the auditorium is a place where you could come and go and watch a show of your own free will. So they put the two together, chiroptorium. And uh, it's a new word that I think you'll soon find in the dictionary. campers. Here they come. Nobody else would do this. No, nobody else ever, nobody else would. It was a gamble. Yeah, and uh, I know a lot of people poke fun at me. Like I say, uh, there's a few was wanting to write stories about Bamberger's Folly. And we joked about it. Uh, we joked about it becoming a wine cellar or a dinosaur exhibit, you know. But uh, patience, patience is what it takes. What's different about it is no one has ever attempted uh, to do something like this. If you went to an architect and told him you'd like a set of plans for a chiroptorium, he wouldn't know what you were talking about. It was uh, something we had to do step by step. Building it uh, was actually like a work of art. If you could see some of the pictures during the construction phase, the welding process, the skeleton of the cave is made out of rebar steel. And it's arched up in big, big arches and put together with a series of wires and then over, the, over that rebar, a skin of uh, lath, metal lath, and then it was sprayed with gunite. At the base of the cave it's 10 inches thick and up on the top it's 8 inches thick. There are three domes to the cave. The first dome, the big one, when you go through the mouth of the cave, it goes in about 30 foot and the, the, the big dome is uh, 40 foot wide and 20 foot high. It's uh, fairly dark, and of course, bats like dark places, so that's a, that's a, a positive as far as the bats are concerned. Um, the floor is getting a good coating of what's called guano, which is uh, bat poop. And uh, at this particular time, the last time I was in, um, the ammonia level was getting pretty high, so it was kind of hard to breathe in there. Bats have a, a metabolic way of dealing with high ammonia and it doesn't harm them. And it's a good thing because all of the bat caves get very high in ammonia. We started construction in 97 and we completed it in the fall of 1998. A, a very small number of bats were here each year, but it was very small and it fluctuated. Over the period of the years, uh, 1999 and 2000, 2001, we'd build up to two or 300, and then it would fall back to zero or 30 or 40, and then it'd go up and down, up and down. But now, in the, the summer of 2003, we're looking at a population that just exploded. Oh, guys, I tell you, I thought I was going to rapture. We have no real good explanation for why the explosion right now, but we're sitting at somewhere near 200, maybe 250,000 bats coming out of here. In the spring, the bats come to Texas. A hundred million of them are assumed to be in this area. They um, go to the nursery caves where uh, many of the females give birth to pups, which after a month and a half of being tended to by their mothers are ready to fly. So we're in the time of year when the pups, as the baby bat is called, is beginning to fly. We're also in a time of year when food supplies are a little bit less. So the temperature in some of these caves goes up. So it's a, 
opportune time of year for the bass to be flying around saying, hey, we'd like to find some better digs. We think that probably um, our nice little colony here is a result of the increase in population of youngsters with their mothers flying around, exploring, learning to fly well. What a thrill to have it right here, you know, on the ranch. And to know that you can build a cave-like structure and have them move in. And it's just extraordinary. You know, the mayors of the cities across America, they want to build a, a big superdome and a, try to attract a football team or something of that nature. And they always use the argument, well, we'll build it and they'll come. Well, that holds true in this animal kingdom as well. The only difference is that we don't have any football team to attract the people. We only have the habitat that we've created, and Mother Nature decides whether it's good enough for them. So the delight and the, the enthusiasm that we have generated here with this, just seeing it and knowing that the bats do like it, kind of vindicates us, and I'm anxious to let the rest of the world know that it does work, and we can mitigate the damage we do to Mother Nature with our shopping centers and our highways and our, our streets and subdivisions and so on. We're just cutting into the natural world right and left. If I get a half million bats in there, I don't buy any more fertilizer. I get all bat guano, it's all organic, and I get five cents a pound more for my calves. And if you got 100 to 200 calves coming off a year and you're getting $30 extra on each one, that's $6,000. Track. <gasps> oh my gosh. I found a dinosaur track. All right, what kind is it? We have set up a foundation so that the things we teach and demonstrate here on Sela Bamberger Ranch will go on in perpetuity. It's a 501c3 organization. It has certain, has a board of directors, and it has education programs for people of all ages, whether they're students or children, or whether they're other landowners. And this chiroptorium can demonstrate to other people as a model, along with all the other things that we do here so what do you want to, call to inspire others to take care of Mother Nature. Yes, a lot of people are standing by right today wanting to know, is this chiroptorium, does this bat cave that this fellow Bamberger built, is it working? And at one time, we had five people standing in line just waiting because they were interested in doing somewhat similar, but they wanted the guinea pig, that's Bamberger. They wanted to know whether or not it really would work. I'm here to declare it works. The bats like it. And we can assist anybody that would like to duplicate an effort like this and give them a tremendous amount of good help and good advice. And from our learning process, there's a lot we can do that would lower the cost considerably. This actually is considered to be the largest man-made habitat for the free will use of mammals anywhere in the world. It blows my mind to watch it, I love it, I'm enthused about it, and I just hope that others that will appreciate it as much as we do and maybe want to think perhaps what they could do on their farm or ranch or their property in the way of man-made habitat for any unknown number of species, not just bats. When the cold weather comes in the fall, they'll go to Mexico but hopefully when they come back again in the spring, they'll remember the chiroptorium and move in.